Welcome to the lesson. Thanks for tuning in today. All right, we've been spending a lot of time talking about scales and, and some triad arpeggios and patterns and things like that, even some chords, but we haven't talked about technique for a while. So we're going to do that today in this lesson. We're going to talk, I'm going to give you some exercises to work on some finger combinations for your technique. And I'm also going to review some of the uh, previous things that we've discussed that relate to finding patterns and finding chords, and that's going to be uh, called the root game. We might have touched on that in an earlier lesson, but I want to make sure we review that and give you some other training on that. So let's start with that first, in fact. Okay, so by now, when I've been writing progressions on the board and I've been writing out patterns and you t uh, I've been telling you, which, you know, where to find patterns, you might find from time to time that you're having difficulty capturing or grabbing the root and understanding where you, you have to go. Okay, well this is something I'm going to help you with today. Okay, so we all know that the open strings of the guitar are E, A, D, G, B, and E. Okay, now that doesn't mean that you know all the rest of the notes and as you, as you get better at your music skills and you study harder and you work on reading music, these things will start to come uh, into, your, uh, into your whole concept of music. But we can improve that even before we get to the point where we're uh, reading all over the neck. I just want you to take a look at your fingerboard here and let's just play a little game where we try to establish the roots of a particular note on each string as we ascend on and up each string. Okay, so for example, if I said E, like I think we've done this before but let's review it. If I said E, most people would have no problem going at least we know those are two E strings, right? But what about the E's in the middle of the strings here? Well, there's an E here. There's also an E here, as well as way up here, right? If you know this is D, and you know that's E right there then, right? Okay, so what about the E and the G string? That would be right here, okay? And the E and the B string is right here, okay? So really, we could play a little game where I said, okay, play it all the E's on your guitar in a quarter note and make sure that you play one one bar for a string. So it would be like maybe like this. If I said E it would be like this. Maybe two on this one because I can hit the octave. I'll just hit that one four times. Next string. Second string. And last string, high string. Okay, so that's basically what we're going to be doing here. But I'm going to put you in different strings. I'm going to talk to you on the, on the top of my head here and make you think on your feet. Okay, so let's say I said, let's say the key of C, all the C roots. Okay, so let's make sure we can start out by finding a C. There it is right there. Okay, let's see if we can do the, the root game here. Here we go. All the C's going up the neck. One, two, six, string. Okay, fifth string, fourth string, third string, second string, first string. Okay, it's pretty cool, isn't it? It's simple, but it, 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 it drills you to find these notes. It keeps you in time when you're doing it. Okay? So, I want you to do, do that over a series of roots. And I've written out kind of a little pattern here on the board to put, to put yourself in a drill. You're not, you might not be able to do this all at once right away, but let's just, let's just show you that this is what it's eventually going to be. You're going to be able to put yourself on a different route as you go up the neck or up the strings and challenge yourself finding these roots. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with the root concepts of the chord forms like this. These are all part of that same information. But the ability to find these roots here in these chord forms has very much to do with being able to see the individual notes on each string. Okay? So, for example, if I went to the key of G and I found all the G notes, I'd start right here. Okay? And then I would go like this. Here we go. Two. Three, four, G, sixth string, fifth string, 
fourth string. Twelfth fret of the G string. Second string. And the first string. Okay, let's go back to C. I'm going to start here and come back down. I'm going down to the D string. Here comes the A string. And the low E string. Okay. So that might be a way you could even use this exercise. You could just go up C. Maybe come back down if you want, or you could go up C and then go to the next root and go down G, and then go up D, and then down A. Okay, let's just see what that would feel like. I'll go up C, right, and then I'll come down. When I hit the, after I hit the high E string, I'm going to go to G and I'm going to come down G. Let's see if we can follow along. Okay, this is really good practice. Believe me. Here we go. One, two. Starting on C, here we go. Fourth string. Third string. Second string. And the first string. Okay, now we're going to move to G and we're going to stay on the first string and then now go backwards. Down G, second string. Down the third string. Down to the fourth string. Down to the fifth string. Down to the bottom string. Okay, now we're going to go up D. So we're going to go way up here. Here's D. Twelfth fret of the D string. Okay, now we're going to come down A. If that's too challenging to come down a different route, then just come, go up and come down the same route and then change the next route and come up, go up and come down. That's okay too. Nothing wrong with that. And if it's too challenging at that tempo, then slow it down. If it's not challenging enough, then bring it up. You can, you can make this as challenging as you want simply by changing the tempo, right? You might think you're, you're doing great here, but if I, I brought it.